got to find out you can grab them tops and you flip them over and say, what's going to do? you got to hold them behind a tree. And you bring it over. See how Michael ended up filling this in right here. Right, so we're out here walking now, kind of looking at uh, what Matt's got cut. Not sure if you can see it on camera or not. But there's water under the wood going about a foot deep I don't know it may work We've got a lot of teaching to do on the shear hand though, I can see that. Y'all can see, at least you should be able to see, how the uh, the road goes this way, but he's got his pile of wood through kind of this way. That's not going, he's gonna, he needs to get those tops more straight. And like all these little bit trash hardwoods that he's got in there trying to fill his mat he needs to cut those separate and put those up in his uh tops kind of like right here you see it's kind of bare that this is where you need your your hardwoods the way i do it when i'm coming in is i'll leave those hardwoods and i'll get my my mat started it looks like he's done both both sides are coming in and that's not the best way to do this you want to be doing just this side coming in and then this side coming out looks like that one tree up there he, he got into so whenever we're putting these hardwoods in our mat like this and they do make it to the loader they'll get thrown off to the side and when it gets thrown off to the side you'll uh how to give the skitter some extra material on down the line to go put in his access but i'll take those hardwoods like that like he's cutting down there right now and you probably can't see that on this gopro but i'll take those hardwoods and I'll lay them, I'll throw them backwards in my mat. He's doing that there. think those little ones like that would make a difference but sometimes it does all right we're fixing to start with the skidding but technically we're not shoveling yet not overlapping our wood the skidder's not having to go down there and shovel a whole bunch up
right now he's just going down there and being easy young seems just easing down through looks like we're fixing it to go get the tire cat skitter john deere's here to lick their cat again on that skitter They're, they didn't time the drive shaft back together just right He backed all the way down there to his last paw, backed over his last paw, making sure there was nothing thrown past it. Because whenever you get done doing, you know, you get done with this one, anything that's left down there, it's just there. You can't go back down there and go get it. Y'all can see the water here. I mean, you wouldn't even be cross the ditch with a rubber tire here. He looks like he's probably gonna be bringing that up here to patch. This is Michael's first time uh, uh, running wood like that, so we'll see what he does. The access feels hard. It's just going to be sloppier than I'll get out. So yeah, he's going to patch a little bit right there, looks like. takes a little bit of running to get that bark knocked off and then that slop knocked off that tree. Find my little trash hardwoods, just throw them to the side. Don't even worry, we're trying to process them. That'll give him something to help build that. Yeah, that'll, that'll give him something to build access with. I don't see anything to scare me yet. We'll try to... There was another water hole about halfway down. I seen him stop and yeah. it in. Probably what he fixed down there. Well, uh... Go ahead and try this other road. Better it gets. Bring my pen down here. Pen. Oh yeah, probably so. Taking uh. Okay, so we had a little uh mishap swapping skitters around here. We were coming down here just to grab the tire cat and get back to work. But the my uncle the other day. He's, he's new to the woods and stuff, and he forgot to turn the power on the 620 off at the master switch, and the uh, it, the batteries were drained. It's been sitting since last Thursday. It's been, it's been sitting for a week. Today's Thursday, and last time it was run was a week ago, Thursday a week ago. So it, uh, We had to jump start that. Of course, I still don't have no jumper cables because mine burned up. So luckily... The dog, the dog at John Deere mechanic here, and he loaned us some. But now we got the skitters fixed, or skitter fixed. Doggett is here redoing their their drive shaft, like I talked about a minute ago. May get y'all some a uh, little bit of video of that. I'm not sure. It, it's hard for me to. I tell y'all, I'm gonna try and get y'all video of something, and I really do want to try, and it don't always work out that way because it, it's hard to read how some people are when it comes to. Uh, cameras and such you know some people are, are not very camera comfortable so anyway we're almost back up here to set y'all stay tuned i think i just saw truck flashing lights coming back down in here that should be the third round for the day we'll be done nine nothing spectacular but it pays the bills and it pays the hands It, uh, <clears throat> it's gonna be real tough to push which we didn't really get started cutting good this morning Whew. we didn't really start getting cutting till about eight o'clock I had to come down here and go over the uh, kind of show the the guys what I was expecting Y'all can see what it looks like here though. Just a big old sloppy hog mess. Not sure if that slopping sound is picking up on audio or not. Anyway. 
I think we'll be able to still get 10 or 12 a day. Like I said, we're fixing to do nine. Getting ready to get started till late. It's just a slow process. Your cutter never gets ahead. You have to be like damn good to uh, get ahead on a cutter doing this. And Matt's learning how to do it. So anyway, I'm headed back down in here to the woods to uh, look, see how this is coming about. Had, I guess you said a little bit of a meeting a while ago with landowner and everything. They were plumb happy with how it looks. So all this here that you see is trash hardwood. We'll never process that. And this is where we were at this morning when I was showing y'all the uh, and I'll flip the big camera on and get some footage of it too kind of overlay with this one but this is where we were standing at this morning whenever I was showing y'all the uh, the ground and and we were watching Michael make his first first run on this stuff and this is where you can see the ground is with all the water and everything. Uh, it's turning out a whole lot better than I thought it was going to. So that's a good thing. So what our game plan is right now is to keep matting the ground like what we're doing and keep working our way back to the back because I have some wood on the ground in the back that we can't quite get to right now and if the sun would ever come out this access will start drying up eventually because you can look right here there's dry dirt right there watch right, here comes Michael past us It just looks like a like he's running on water that's, that's basically what this stuff is it's like water Looks like he's gonna set that down and go back and get a little more he may have been cleaning that row up or something but it's it's getting the ground in the woods is okay the ground up front is what's iffy. So anyway, as I was saying, it's uh, the sun is actually starting to try and come out a little bit. Not much. The, uh, the access looks like complete damn it, but The woods part themselves or itself is actually holding up relatively well. I mean, I, I think y'all can see down that row over a little bit. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just got a, a good sloppy top to it. One of the things of having a track machine, a dueled out skitter, and knowing how to do this shoveling. You can keep on working. If this was the only track you had to work and all you had was a rubber tire machine, you would not be working this.
yeah that row that wood there he was finishing up a row and that drag that he just passed with is a uh, is a fresh drag but I mean y'all can see here like what I was talking a minute ago y'all can see it's it's there's dry dirt under the soup he had two pieces up there in the access and adding to that. It seems like it's getting better. The biggest thing that kind of got the access foobard a little was we were working this during a rain uh, Monday and we were skidding from the back before I pulled them out up front and the, the the rain whenever you skid in the rain it just slops everything up and the rain don't run off anywhere it just sits right there in those soupy sloppy slush holes that you've created until you start running back through it again but so long as he keeps uh, uh, keeps filling in his trash where he's needing to I mean, like y'all can see right here, I mean, it's, this right here is actually pretty dry. There's, there's some clay right there. I can see what it looks like as he's working it. The, the shear, shear man needed to take these butts here and move them over to here and straighten that that first pile up right there but it's not so wet right here so that's not so critical I mean, one of the things one of the things that sucks about working a second thinning is whoever first thin this instead of the way I'd have worked it was I'd have put my my access up there kind of close to where they have it but instead of coming just straight down here like they did I would have put my row because you got rows run, or you got your access running this way and then you got your down row running this way and if y'all can see the distance between my arms here it's like a you know it's 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 a really hard u-turn where your access over here is this way and your down row is this way so you got a big wide you you know your skitter's got kind of a swoopy coming out here and over here he's doing a u-turn so you're doing two things by doing that one you're making it hard on your skitter driver to come out of the end of your rows and turn you know his wood's gonna get up against that side over there and it's gonna pull him and he's gonna spin getting out there and that's gonna end up tearing up your ground but the biggest thing that that's gonna create Michael get past us here. The biggest thing that it's going to create is if you can see the way the access is running like this, these down rows are running kind of at an angle backwards away from your access. So you're skidding technically away from, you know, that end of your down row down there is closer to your loader than this end up here. So you're skidding away from your loader and then you make your turn and you go back. What they should have done was they come out of that set corner up there like they did and they should have went straight across their rows they should line their access up to go 90 you know where the, the down the access matched up 90 degrees to their down rows where this one here is you know probably like a, a 60 or a 70 degree angle and this one over here is like a you know 110 degree angle or something if they would have left it if they went straight across their down rows that would have shortened their skid distance because this access goes a quite a ways down in here. But 
once it's first thinned, however it is, whenever you get to it doing a second thin, that's just how it is. You don't you don't get the option to reroute things and stuff. You have to work it how it was was worked the first time. And not everybody thinks about those little things like that. of wood kind of crossways over there and he's trying to get his get, she's trying to get that piece of wood back straight and then again wait, 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 it's looking he may have been picking up that you know he may be cleaning up this row I didn't realize he's done that close to the front sticking out you see all right I mean, you see how it, it's it's got him hung he might have to end up setting that down or swinging over or he's gonna push himself is what he's gonna do but see that wood is now stuck in the ground back here as he's trying to pull it around that corner so that's he had to unstick it pivot it and then pull it all up it takes a lot of power to do something like that. Now, like that one that you saw stuck way ahead, he'll just have to end up breaking it off. Because you can't get every one of those things right at all times. So you'll just have to break that off. That'd be a trash piece that the loader has just throw away up there. That's one of the things about doing the shoveling like this is, is doing it in a thinning anyway, you're gonna lose a lot of, not a lot. You're gonna recover about 80, 85% of your timber when you start shoveling really hard. But it, you, you're going to lose an, an easy 10% of your volume in broke pieces, pieces that are just lost in the ground forever if it gets really bad. We'll watch Matt start his next row here.
Now what he's gonna do here, or what he's trying to do, is he's trying to get as much wood in that head that he can right here that he sees readily available. Now me, I would've just cut that one right there beside me. That's gonna help my skitter driver. Again, me, I would take those two feet, the, that head pull that I got right there, I'd have cut everything I could right here at the, the front. And if all I could get was that, I would split it. Split it meaning I'd pick up about, you know, just say for giggles here, say I have an even number. I will take, a, you know, Six, there's six pieces, I'll take three out of that pile and I'll pick it up, flip the top over into the other side where my runners are gonna have to be. And then place the butts where they need to be. So we're gonna watch this right here pretty, pretty first hand. See, I think these runners right here are too wide. The first, the left runner is going to be pretty well close. The right runner is going to be, I mean the left runner is going to be too far to the right. talking about this runner needed to be over right over here that's one of the things of having a, a green skit or shear hand it's hard for him to judge kind of where it needs to be myself I always go from the center of my rails out as long as I know from the center of my rails out have wood I know I'm gonna have a decent layer of, uh, or decent runner built there. But if he don't go back here and get wood to put in this, what he'll end up having to do is pull over here where I'm standing, grab those trees, flip them up, lay the tops over where they need to be, where his tires are gonna run, and then scoot his butts over. But kinda back to what Matt was starting that row, that one single tree that's left right there, I would cut that because these rows are starting to get set at a hard angle. I would, uh, you'll cut that and that'll let the skitter's wood pivot easier around that corner and he'll get out in his access easier. Because when it's got a backwards, a hard backwards turn like that, especially when it's wet, he ain't gonna be able to pull as big a drag as what he could pull even though the crown will allow it he's having to lighten up on his drag because you're not going to be able to pull all that big heavy wood around that corner. And I'm sure this video is going to be like super long, but there's lots of good content right here, so... right now live watching stuff oh. alright so what he's doing is exactly what I was just talking about a minute ago he went back there he sees that he needs wood here he's gonna go back there grab him some wood Place it up here. And he's going to set his butts down where he wants them. He's going to back up over his butts a little bit. And he's going to grab it and he's going to heal it up. It'd be just like healing it with a loader. And see how he, oh yeah, that's a good throw. And then he'll place that wood just, just right there, just like a loader would place it by healing it up. And he'll try and mash it down a little bit. 
He's gonna pull up, he's gonna get square back up on his runners. That was really good. That was some, that was pretty good. Realistically, he needs to go do the same thing again and do it over here. Even though the wood is, there's a piece, there is one piece there. I mean, somebody that was experienced doing this, he'd just grab these tops, these two pieces right here, and he'd flip them over where, where he's needing them. But being a little bit green and learning this, he'll go to the back and grab probably the same amount of wood that he just did right there which is one two three four five pieces he'll probably grab you know four or five pieces again back there and bring it up here and put in in that spot where you don't have anything to run on We'll watch him make his turn up here. You see how he's, he's struggling right there? It's the second time he struggled right there. What it probably is, is there's a, a piece of wood, a bigger piece of wood right there that's probably thrown crooked or thrown too far to the inside. people have the misconception if you let those bottom booms back it'll help you make a corner that's wrong that'll make you shove and especially in this wet ground you need those bottom booms tucked as tight into you as you can get them but it's not hurting anything but there is one piece of wood right there but it's just underneath that slop if we were pushing the ground really hard he would have to fill that hole in, but we're not really, it's, it's holding up, so there's no point in doing it. We're not doing any root damage or anything like that, so there's there's no point in taking the time to fill that in even though it's holding up. But if we was having to push the ground really hard or it was more wet, yes, we would have to fill that in, so. y'all up here watching this I'm also filming slow motion 